Today, in the Carrefour neighbourhood of Djokwe, everything appears calm. But two years ago, in this small town in the west of Ivory Coast, it was a very different scene. 800 people were massacred here in just two days of violence. Djokwe suffered some of the worst violence of the post-election conflict, which spread across the country after then-President Lauren Bagbo refused to accept defeat to Alison Ouattara in December 2010. As forces loyal to Ouattara moved to take control of the West, they burnt down homes and attacked communities traditionally loyal to Lauren Bagbo. During the attack, bodies were hidden down wells, poisoning the local water supply. Many of the bodies were never recovered. Those that were are now buried here, in an unmarked grave next to the local football pitch. Je pense que c'est une blessure qui est encore qui, qui est dans notre cœur. Elle ne sera jamais guérie, mais aussi la cicatrice est là. Elle ne sera jamais guérie. C'est là, elle a été tuée à Calfou ici par les dozo et d'autres personnes. Hein? Vous voyez Donc aujourd'hui, ils sont leur corps n'a même pas pu être retrouvé. On ne sait même pas où ils sont. Les gens qui ont tué nos parents, nos enfants, nos mamans, ils ont tué. Ils vont les attraper pour vous mettre dans la prison. Two years on. While former President Lauren Bagbo awaits a potential trial at The Hague, not a single person has been charged for the killings at Carrefour. More than 3,000 people are estimated to have died during the post-election conflict. Both the UN and the Ivorian government's commission of inquiry agree that atrocities were committed on both sides. 150 people have been charged with violent crimes related to the conflict, but as yet, none have come from forces loyal to the current president, Alison Ouattara. Amnesty is very concerned that that, 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 that that people who have been responsible for gross human rights violations uh, and who were supportive of the of President Ouattara as well as the Force Nouvelle have not been worried by the by the national justice as well as in by the international justice. UN patrols continue to monitor the security situation in the West, where sporadic attacks on communities are still taking place. Most people have now returned to their villages, but they all complain of the same problem. Dozos, traditional hunters originally from the north. Dozos have been named by the UN, along with members of the Republican forces loyal to President Ouattara, as key participants in the mass killings at Carrefour and other villages nearby. C'est ceux-là même qui ont tué nos parents. On les a vus tous les tués. Nous qui avions échappé, on les a vus aujourd'hui, on en parle. C'est les mêmes encore qui vivent avec nous. Et dans le même état, dans le même accoutrement. Vous voyez, quelqu'un qui vient au village, en plein village, il a un fusil au dos, pourtant, il n'est pas militaire, ni policier, il n'est pas gendarme. Bon, vous voyez, ça ne peut pas mettre à l'aise. Dozos were relied on during the conflict to bolster President Ouattara's Republican forces. The government says now the conflict is over, they should stop all security activities. But just outside Jokwe, we filmed them openly operating illegal roadblocks extorting money from the local community. While the dozos remain active in the West, back in the economic capital of Abidjan, the government is reintegrating former militia members into civilian life. At this ceremony, they demonstrate the skills they'll be employing in their new jobs as wardens in the prison service. This ex-combatant has officially become a civilian again, after handing in his weapon and military fatigues. By trying to help these boys and girls to get a new life, to get something to do according to their skills, naturally we're trying to work out on the pressure, on the social pressure in the country. Oh, avant, avant, c'est avant, maintenant, maintenant c'est une nouvelle vie. Maintenant nous faisons partie des agents d'encadrement pénitentiaire. The UN is providing support for the Ivorian government's reconciliation program but it stresses the importance of including defeated forces in the process. The point is, from a political point of view, to what extent we can make that process 
inclusive. You know, all parties who have been involved in fighting or, or, or uh, process related to insecurity could be brought together and could go through this process. The government wants to put 60,000 ex-combatants through the program. So far, they've managed 2,000. Of those, a tiny fraction have been drawn from forces who supported former President Lauren Bagbo. This program is a key part of the Watara government's policy to promote reconciliation in the country. But as long as the killings carried out in its name go unpunished, many people, particularly in the West, question whether there can be a lasting peace.